Hello and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Susie Edwards. And in this episode, we are going to be looking at what we can expect for the month of June. So this is a collective reading for everybody. I have collected um, various different cards, different decks here. There's quite a lot of cards that have come out. If you want to know which decks I'm using, feel free to comment um, or ask questions email me um, however you want to connect with me. So what I've done is get the deck, shuffled them, just ask the question, what do we need to know this month? And these are the cards that have come out. We are going to have a look at the new moons and the full moons that are coming up for the month ahead as well and the moon energy that is available to us. We have some messages from our ancestors um, and lots of different messages going on here. So I'm going to start with uh, a moon energy that came out. So this is exactly where we are in the moon phase today as I'm recording this, which is May the 29th. Okay, so um, we are at first quarter moon. So that's when you start to see half of the moon in the sky and this is the time to really assess where you are assess what's working what's not working bearing in mind when you're working with the phases of the moon at the new moon you would have set intentions so you can really start to assess your progress here what's working what isn't working um, what needs to be let go of to create space where can you put more attention into the things that are working for you. So you always want to be aware of where you're at in manifesting your goals, dreams, desires, right? And you can do that by really connecting into the phases and the energy that the moon gives us to really help us to move forwards. It has very magical powers. So right now is the time to really assess, like I say, what's working and what's not working so that you can take decisive action in moving forwards to help you to manifest your desires. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. Okay, so I'm going to think I'm going to start um, with tarot. I've got a lot of cards here. So um, it's just a case of um, just pulling what I am drawn to. Okay, so I'm going to start with the four of cups. Now, for me, the four of cups, he is really thinking about his his dreams, his goals. He's quite focused on them, as you can see in the card. There are a couple of issues here, though. One is he's not paying attention to the opportunities and possibilities that are around him. OK, so maybe he just doesn't have uh, an awareness that there are other opportunities and possibilities around him. OK, and he he is very focused on um, on this, this, this goal, this dream. Um, and this is an emotional attachment because it is the card of cups. It's very much linked to our emotions. So there is a real emotional attachment to the outcome of whatever it is that he is wanting to manifest or whatever it is that you are wanting to manifest. OK, and when we have an emotional attachment, it can be very hard to manifest the thing that we want because we are attached to a certain outcome, right? And what we want to be doing is, you know, putting out our goals, dreams, desires out there to the universe and allowing the universe to bring them in in the best way possible for us. So we want to be asking for this or something better, right? So really look at, you know, what your your goals, your dreams and desires are and how emotionally attached you are to them because that is going to block them coming forwards right because you're not allowing for the universe to bring you what's in your highest interest right and that's really really important so also when this card comes up there may be some mindset issues going on here as well so definitely look at your mindset um around success money your goals, dreams, and desires, and all of those things, right? Because we don't want any blockages holding you back. And that's really, really important in helping you to move forwards. Okay, so I also want to talk about the full moon in Sagittarius um, on 
Saturday. Okay, so we have the full moon in Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is a fire sign. Um, it's a rather fiery fire sign. Um, and the, it's all about um, travel. It's about exploration. Now, Sagittarius is linked to the planet Jupiter, right? And Jupiter is the planet of good luck and good fortune. Okay, so it's a really, really powerful time for personal growth, for expansion, for adventure. Okay, Sagittarians are very much um, adventure seekers um, and, and travel. So really, this energy that's coming forward on Saturday is really, really powerful. Okay, this is the time to dream big, right? Sagittarians don't do small, right? They dream big. They take risks, this is also an opportunity to let go of what is no longer serving you as well. So whether you're looking to start a new project, whether you're looking to attract more abundance into your life, or whether you're looking to deepen your spiritual practice, this full moon is really, really powerful in helping you to do that. So you're really paying attention to what's going on on Saturday. So that is the 3rd of June. Okay, so take advantage, right, and really use that powerful energy. You've got Jupiter connected with this. You've got the the um, the energy of, of luck and good fortune coming from Jupiter. You've got the full moon in Sagittarius, which is, you know, very much um, the fiery sign. They're determined. They're adventurous. They travel. Um, so this is a really, really good time to take risks and to be adventurous in your life. Um, as well. So let's have a look. So over the month, you are going to have doors opening for you. So we have portals here. Um, so doors are opening, you decide rewards and wild card, right? The universe is offering us an opportunity for growth and expansion. And I'll show you that um, in a second with this full moon in Sagittarius. That is one way. I'm hoping you can't hear all the noise outside. Um, that is one way you can um, grow and expand, right? Because um, Sagittarius is, is offering us that as well. We also have um, some messages from the Akashic Records here as well. But um, let's focus on this. So doors are opening, right? We are going from 3D to 5D. It's going to be um, a slow process. But doors of opportunity are opening up for, for you. But it's up to you to, um, to take that opportunity, right, to open those doors. They're there and available for you, but no one can open them but you. And that's really, really um, important. So um, this is also a really good time to see beyond what is going on around you as well. We tend to have like this small vision, right, that we can only see the things that are going on in front of us. And again, I'm drawn to this, you know, very 3D reality that we're living in at the moment, whereas 5D literally opens us up and anything is possible. So it is time to see beyond the limitations that are around you, you know, your own self-imposed limitations as well. So open yourself up to opportunities and possibilities because everything that I'm looking at here is saying those opportunities and possibilities are here. Um, we have the two of wands bringing us opportunity and possibility. I just need to pick up a card that I just dropped. Okay, so the two of wands is bringing us opportunity and possibility. The portal is bringing us opportunity and possibility as well. Let me see what else we've got here. I've got a lot of cards here today. Okay, sometimes it's our own self-imposed um, restrictions, self-sabotaging behaviors that keep us stuck, right? When the Queen of Swords comes up, for me, she's very much the, the overthinker right? So instead of doing, she's thinking, right? And thinking, 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 right? Which just causes worry, stress, and burning your own energy, right? So she is um, overly in her masculine energy, okay? Because she's thinking all the time. Um, she's burning herself out with worry and, um, you know, constant thoughts of what if, 
right? So instead of doing things, she is um, thinking, right? Also, she is, for me, she represents Gemini, right? And we've got the Gemini new moon on the 19th of June, which we can talk about um, a little bit as well. Um, so for me, this is Gemini energy, right? So, but she's a bit of an overthinker. She's over analytical and that does stop her from moving forwards, right? So I'm just talking very, very generally here. And this is the kind of energy that I'm feeling at the moment is that, um, we're not seeing all of the opportunities and possibilities that are available to us because we're overanalyzing everything, you know, before we, take that risk before we take that leap of faith, right? So you are being asked to see beyond what you can see in your reality and to let go of worry, to let go of, um, you know, self-imposed restrictions, right? Because they're the things that are holding you back. Now, also talking about things that are holding you back, you're being asked to kind of slow down, right? And be in the present moment so that you can feel, so that you can sense, so that you can really connect with everything that is going on around you. So this is just sustainability, slow down, tend to your own garden. So for me, this is really talking about um, raising your own vibration, raising your energy so that you are ready for the next steps. So this links in really, really nicely with quietening your mind. So I feel that these are coming in um, towards the time of the, the new moon. So in about um, two weeks time, you know, our energy, the moon's energy starts to um, slow down. It starts to kind of get smaller as the moon gets smaller in the sky. That is time for us to slow down. It's time for introspection. It's a time for um, self-love, self-care, gratitude, and all of those things. So as we approach the new moon in Gemini, we want to be like really looking after ourselves, looking after our own energy, putting into place self-care, self-love um, routines to help us to re-energize, to revitalize, right? And a really good thing to be doing at that time is like connecting in with Mother Earth as well. So let's talk a little bit about the new moon in Gemini. So new moon in Gemini is a great way to connect with um, our spirituality, to set new intentions, um, and to really focus on communication, meditation, connecting with others, and releasing old patterns, habits, and behaviors. So really focusing in on spiritual growth as the new moon in Gemini comes in, okay? As with every new moon, we want to set our intentions for the month ahead. That's really, really important. Keeps us on track. It keeps us motivated um, and it helps us to bring those things into our reality. So our air signs are very much about communication, um, especially Gemini. So really working on communication as the new moon comes in. So clearly communicating your wants, needs and desires to yourself, to others around you. Um, and this is a good time to set those boundaries, right? Clearly communicating boundaries. And again, this is just before the um, new moon comes in. So this is the um, waxing gibbous moon. So just before the new moon, about a week or so before the new moon, we want to get really, really crystal clear with our boundaries and clearly communicate those to those around us. You know, those that are physically in our energy is going to be really, really important in helping you to move forwards. Okay, so make sure to set some boundaries. Okay, so I asked in the Akashic Records what we need to know. Are there any Akashic blocks that need to be cleared this month? And the first one that came up was growth and up level. Now, if you're going through a bit of a difficult time right now, if you know, you're kind of going through the dark night of the soul, everything feels really, really difficult, chances are you're going through an up level. Right, we are all slowly being up leveled to um, 5D 
energy. So we have to go through different layers and different phases, right? So know that the difficulties are around, that are around you are a part of your up level, right? And we have to kind of ride the waves with that, um, but take, you know, um, action to help you to move forwards, right? To help you to get through this up level as fast as you possibly can, okay? So that is one of the Akashic um, blocks collectively that is going on at the moment. So there are things that we can do to, to help that inside the Akashic records. We can certainly look at clearing karma um, and, um, you know, moving things forwards. Okay, so there was another... I thought there was another card that was connected to that. I guess we'll find it. Yes, so clearing karma. Okay, so um, this is a really, really good time to clear karma. And clearing that inside the Akashic Records is really, really powerful. So this is karmic relationships. So Orion energy, polarity, soul growth, and conflict. Right, so conflict quite often comes up when we're going through an up level because there are things that we don't want to leave behind. There are things that um, are feeling out of alignment with us. And perhaps even sometimes the things that do feel in alignment with us, we have to leave behind because we're up leveling and they will become out of alignment with us as part of the up level. Okay, so some karmic clearing is going to be really, really powerful this month to help you with the um, the growth and up level that the Akashic Guides are bringing forwards for us. The other um, Akashic block that we're holding on to collectively is Vow of Poverty. Okay, so this comes up quite a lot. If you'd like to know how to clear these Akashic blocks, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I do have some... Um, some clearings like the wealth alignment, which I, I'll put in the link. You can sign up for the wealth alignment, and that will help to clear some of the um, vows, contracts, and agreements that we're holding on to around wealth. So, collectively, we're still holding on to vows of poverty that are stopping us from really stepping into our own abundance. So, um, Yesterday, as part of my Aligned Goddess, I created um, a really, really powerful um, vow clearing all around money. It is only part of the Aligned Goddess, so I will give you um, the information on that. So if you're like really ready to step into your business, then the Aligned Goddess is going to help you to do that because they're the kind of things that we are clearing. Okay, so that is the vow of poverty. Okay, so let's see what else we've got here. So this month is very much about answering the call. You know, we've talked a little bit about um, our awarenesses that we are being led to, you know, go into this 5D energy. So we have the rose thread, inner call, soul led, the mystic, living courageously. So we talked a little bit about living courageously with this full moon in Sagittarius to take those risks, to take that leap of faith right so again you're being asked to live courageously like follow your dreams manifest the things that you want everything that we want is our birthright right it is all available to us <coughs> sorry about that <coughs> there's lots of seeds flying around <coughs> it is all available to us right but we have to live courageously we have to take that risk we have to jump in with um with both feet right if something really feels in alignment with us take that risk, go after that dream, right? So that we can make massive changes in our life. So we can see massive shifts happening, right? So that we're living in fulfillment. We're living in alignment with our soul purpose. Okay. So talking about living in alignment with our soul purpose, we have the 10 of cups here. Now the 10 of cups for me emotionally is, you know, it, it, it is that happiness, it's that connection, it's everything that we want, health, wealth, happiness, abundance, um, you know, the, the soul relationship, all of the things, right? So when the Ten of Cups comes up, there's a lot of um, emotional happiness coming here, you know, feeling, um, feeling in alignment, feeling connected, 
right? Um, as you can see, it's a cat and a dog that are very, very connected, right? So, you know, two very different animals, so two very different kind of people can connect and create that happiness, that joy, that connection, that understanding, right um and that's really really important that's what we want in our relationships whether there are romantic relationships whether there are um working relationships our partnerships you know whatever they may be our friendships we want to be connected to people that fully understand it understand us and that we have that real co emotional connection with so there are some new emotional connections coming this over the this next month Okay, um, which is really, really powerful. So do take any invitations that you get to go out, to meet new people, to socialize, to let your hair down and to have fun. So opportunities are coming in. Obviously here um, in the Northern Hemisphere, we're going into summer, the weather's getting great. You know, we've kind of been waiting for the weather to change, for the days to get longer um, and it really feels like we're ready now, right? We're ready to start um, start celebrating, start getting out, start meeting people and socializing. So um, where I live in um, rural Italy, um, the last couple of weekends, so like from mid-May, the bands are at the bars and the cafe. So there's live music every weekend, like until like, I think we got home about 11 o'clock after I picked my daughter up from the airport yesterday. Um, there are live bands every weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, you can just go to a bar, you can listen to the live music, you can connect with people. And it's absolutely awesome. So just like really starting to feel that energy now that it is time to get out, it's time to socialize, right? We've waited for a long time for this energy to come in because it's been a bit of a funny winter um, and spring has just been so wet here um, as I'm sure most of you have had an awareness of what's been going on uh, in Italy and the rain um, it certainly made the news so um, it really feels like it, it's that time right for us all to get out for us all to socialize to have fun to let our hair down okay um, we also have empathetic starseed, so energetic sovereignty, absorbing what is not yours. Okay, so as an empath, we tend to take on everybody else's energy, right? And if we're unaware that we're an empath or um, unaware that we're, we're taking on other people's energy, we can start to really feel out of sorts, right? Things can trigger us that wouldn't normally trigger us because we've taken on other people's energy. So it is important to clear that energy. It is important to um, make sure that you're protecting yourself, right? You can you can be an empath and, and feel what people are feeling, you know, know if someone's upset, if someone's got an issue or whatever without taking it on. Right, and that is really, really important because other people's energy is the biggest thing that can drain you, okay? So really looking at protecting yourself and being of service, but being of service without it affecting you, right? So really do look at um, whose energy you've taken on and how to release that. I mean, I don't know about you, but if you've um, walked through town, like through the shops or the shopping center, whatever. Um, and suddenly you felt really down and you cannot put your finger on it. And like, you just feel exhausted or um, just kind of out of sorts. That's because you've taken on someone else's energy, right? You've walked through someone else's aura or you've connected to someone and you can't quite put your finger on it, right? So it's really, really important that you clear your energy, that you protect yourself from other people's energy, okay? Um, especially now, you know, as there's so much going on, um, we're trying to ascend and we don't want to be holding other people's energy, right? It's really hard to follow your sole purpose and your sole mission if you're walking around with other people's energy, okay? Because then you're not in your authenticity because you've got all this other energy going on around you. Okay, so as we come to the new moon, we want to go with the flow and rest, recuperate, 
go within um and start manifesting right the new moon is very much about manifestation it's about setting your goals setting your intentions for the lunar cycle ahead so spend those couple of days just before the new moon really thinking about what it is that you want right what would you like to manifest in the next 30 days okay 29 and a half days um if we're going to be really accurate right so really think about the lunar cycle ahead what is it that you want to manifest right of course it's a great idea to put out like our big manifestations but i also feel that you know putting out smaller manifestations or smaller intentions um for each lunar phase is really really powerful because it helps us to see that this energy works right the moon the moon supports us so if we're going for um you know little things every 30 days it starts to build our confidence right it starts to build our belief in what's available to us what that we can manifest that you know all of those things right so i would definitely say um you know really think about what it is as newman comes in a couple of days before connecting to yourself time for introspection for rest recuperation re-energizing and really think about you know what intention are you going to set on the new moon on the 19th okay so lastly I've got three more cards. So we have the nature spirits. So connecting in with elves, fairies, and rock formations. So the elementals are all around us. So take that time to connect to Mother Earth, to all of the different, um, you know, fairies and um, elves and all the elementals that are around us. So you probably can't see because i'm not sure exactly where it is but behind me um at the weekend i made a fairy garden with my granddaughter um and it's absolutely awesome and it all lights up and everything so i will put a picture of it on uh, on facebook um so that you can see it she has destroyed it a little bit because she's only four um but we had great fun making this a fairy garden. So, you know, take the time to connect to the fairies and the elementals and Mother Earth in whatever form is right for you. Because that's going to re-energize you. It's going to, um, when we connect with Mother Earth, the fairies, the, the, the elves um, and all the other elementals, we are connecting in to Mother Earth's wisdom and abundance. Okay, so do spend some time doing that over this time around the new moon is really, really good to do that. Um, and you're being asked to connect in with um, the deities that are around you um, and working with you as well. So these are both ancestors. So these messages come from your ancestors that um, it's time to honor the deities that are around you. So working with prayers, offerings and asking for help. Um, as well is going to be really, really important. So looking at the month of June, very successful month ahead. There's a lot of prosperity, um, public recognition. If you're in business, you know, an opportunity to shine, to be visible, um, to get the attention of other people, right? So we're working with two really, really powerful moons um, for, for business, for communication, um, Sagittarius for, you know, really getting out there and um, getting our businesses out there um, and taking risks and all of those things. And then Gemini for the communication and, you know, connecting with new people, new clients um, and all of the things. So I'd love to know how this reading resonates with you, your takeaways. As with, you know, all readings, take with you what resonates, live with you what doesn't. But I would love to know um, what resonates with you, what action steps you're going to take over the month of June to really help you to bring in this success, abundance, happiness, joy, um, and all the lovely energies that go with the Six of Wands. So I look forward to catching up with you all again next week where we're going to be journeying into our Akashic Records to clear some Akashic blocks that are holding us back. So I look forward to seeing you then. Ciao for now.